We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Welcome at the networking session of the Dilemma Coalition on Internet Standards, Security and Safety, as it is called in the invite. Uh, yesterday, we changed our name. We made a decision to name ourselves Internet Standards, Security and Safety Coalition. So that is uh, something that will be announced uh, officially through the IGF channels fairly soon. With me is Janice Richardson. She is the vice chair of the working group two of this Dynamic Coalition. On the right side is Savio Vinicius de Moraes, and he is the vice chair of the working group one. We uh, have other people, I can't see who is online, but I understand that the chair of working group two on education is online, and Mark Arvel, the senior policy advisor, is online. And that uh, I can see you, Mark, I can't see uh, anybody else. So um, we have two people in the room, and I have, how many people do we have online? Five. Uh, Mark, I suggest that, that you... Uh, Raymond. Uh, I can see Raymond um, now. Yes, hi, Raymond. Oh, yeah. And who else is online, Mark? Sorry, Quacker and three. Uh, our, our, yes, great to see you, our Tanasu, Levente Dobje at the moment. I've just come from the uh, Best Practice Forum on Cybersecurity. I did a big message there about switching from there to here, but they have another 15 minutes to run. So hopefully, people will switch. And I, I said, you know, from norms, they were discussing norms, but also Art Manion was talking about vulnerabilities. And I said, come and talk to us because, uh, you know, we will discuss really about uh, the practicalities of enhancing security and addressing vulnerabilities through standards. So I hope the message has, will help deliver some more participation. Thank you. We will see you. Thank you, Mark. Um, we have two people in the room, so perhaps we can ask you uh, to introduce yourself uh, in, the, in a moment. And I see Avo, so uh, welcome Avo online. Uh, let me start. To, it, Thank uh, you. Let's make a very short introduction of the Dynamic Coalition for those already participating. Uh, the idea is to make the internet more secure and safer through the massive deployment of already existing security related internet standards and ICT best practices. So somehow there is a gap between the theory of internet security and the daily practice of insecurity and how can this gap be closed. For that we have started with three working groups. The first one is on security by design, a sub working group on internet of things because in the future there could be other topics under that header. The second is on education and skills. So closing the gap between what is currently offered in tertiary education, uh, cybersecurity and internet governance and architecture is concerned versus what society specifically and specifically industry demands from students coming out of, uh, out of uh, the tertiary facilities. The third one is on procurement. So if governments, large organizations and, and industry would procure more secure devices, services and products, then automatically there would be a business case for secure products and a positive pressure on, on industry to produce more secure, secure by design. Next to that, we have what I call blank spaces. So there could be a working group on consumer protection. There could be a working group on, on consumer advocacy, on what current regulators in privacy or telecommunications or technicalities or, or consumer protection 
could actually do with the current law. What do, does the law currently offer on a duty of care to, to produce a manufacturer? What the privacy rules actually offer if you look at it from a different angle, and that's the angle of securing products. For cars and planes, etc., and for food, it's all normal to have these sort of regulations in place, but it's not for the in, for internet industry. And should that change somehow over the future? And that is something that could be explored in the future, but we have not taken up to start with. We um, are aiming to produce tangible outcomes in the in the manner of the IGF plus, and the tangible outcomes could take the form of policy guidelines or recommendations. It could be a cool toolkit. It could be a capacity building program, depending on the sort of outcome we will produce and what the world asks for when we produce them. We, um, sorry for that, I'll silence it as soon as I finish my introduction, um, that we are going to pre present uh, several uh, research proposals in the near future from all three working groups. And I will in, uh, ask my vice chairs or the chair, depending on who is going to present online, to give a very short introduction on their plan, just two or three minutes. And then we hand over the floor because this is a networking session so that we get to know each other and not that we, uh, we are talking to you the whole time. So as you are in the room, Janice, let me start with you and that you give a very short update of what you're going to do, and then Savio, that you do it for your group. And uh, if Mallory is in the other session, um, she will be here soon, and I'll give her the word as well. So Janice, please. Good morning. I represent Working Group 2. Working Group 2 is about education. What is the difference or where are the gaps between what young people are graduating, the skills, the knowledge that they're graduating with, what are the expectations of industry, and why is there such a gap? Because we know that it's young people normally who should be bringing in the innovation into the world of cybersecurity if they're not getting the right knowledge, the right skills, and the right training, then how are we going to meet this growing demand of uh, cybersecurity. Uh, we will be conducting research beginning with interviews, validation with vocational training centers, and then uh, a survey to gather some quantitative uh, data. And finally, this will result in a report around the middle of next year, we hope. But also, let's hope some workshops um, and a lot of lobbying to make sure that these lacking skills, these lacking knowledge are actually met by education systems and vocational training. And the word over to Savio Venetius de Moraes to present on working group one on IoT security by design. Thank you, Walt. So in the working group, group one, we are uh, looking for uh, what we have still uh, by up to now uh, around cybersecurity best practices and standards for IoT uh, from different backgrounds, from, from the ATF, from the IEEE, from the, the the icon from from many many uh, uh, companies uh, and institutions and so organizations uh, and we are also trying to understand which parts of of these standards and and best best practices are being deployed and for those uh, who are not being deployed why are they they're not being deployed and also uh, the lacks that uh, the lack we have uh, in some in some parts of the uh, cybersecurity in the, the 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 ecosystem of IoT in the uh, IoT ecosystem. So we know that we need more standards and best practices. So uh, we have we are aiming to map this the, this need for standards, but also we, we uh, need to understand. Uh, why the, the current uh, documents and initiatives 
uh, are not being deployed or used by the by the end users. So this is this is our current work. Uh, we are uh, working in one. Ah, I, I saw you already just join us. So if you want, you can add some other thing. But uh, now we, I think he's saying something. <laughs> Uh, but continue, uh, continue, please. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yuri is the chair of working group one. We just just joined. Uh, sorry, but uh, some troubles with the internet connections uh, was in my office, uh, university office. Now it's uh, all okay. Excuse me. Well, very welcome, Yuri and Savio is taking care. So please uh, finish, uh, Savio. Okay, thank you. So this is the point we are working now. We are uh, analyzing. Uh, we are creating the structure for may um, for make a general analysis of the documents we have now, uh, and for the next year we are looking for. Uh, some other possibilities of research, maybe uh, as uh, Mark mentioned uh, in in our emails, uh, something about uh, how the uh, how to handle the operations of some home IoT devices or or some other uh, categories of devices, uh, cloud based, the local uh, edge based, and so on. So this is what what we are planning for the the un, upcoming works. So I think that's it for now. Maybe I can, if you can add something. Uh, thank you, Savio. Um, I forgot to, for the third my third session. Now for the third time, I forgot to introduce myself because I always like to go to the topic. My name is Wouter Natris, and as I said, I'm the coordinator of this dynamic coalition. Um, the floor is now to you online and uh, and here in the room in Katowice. Um, I'd like to ask you to step up and introduce yourself and express your interest in this dynamic coalition and all three are welcome to do so. And then we'll go online for the people who are there and Mark, then I'll ask you to coordinate. So please. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to attend this uh, IGF uh, this time live here. Uh, my name is Asim Adil, and uh, I'm an IT consultant. Uh, I work for uh, GIZ. Uh, I'm based in Frankfurt. Uh, my interest is about uh, all uh, data vulnerabilities, which now we are facing, and that, has, that is posing a threat to the common population. Uh, either it is uh, misused by the attackers or the corporates or either by the governments. So these topics are very much highly interested for me and uh, I would like to stay in touch and know more about it. If there is something happening. Well, th thank you very much. And you're very welcome to join. If you have a business card, then we'll make sure to reach out and you can join uh, and, and perhaps as an expert, join discussions and debates on, uh, on what we are doing. I will leave my business card here. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Alexander Savnin. Um, I'm uh, teaching internet governance in Russia, and actually we have in our country the same issues as uh, you said as a main target of these dynamic coalitions. But uh, main issue in our country is an ability to communicate to each other and especially communicate to somebody outside. So I joined these networking sessions to have a look on uh, what this dynamic coalition is actually produced and how it works intersessionally between IGF and maybe provide expertise or recommend somebody who will help you to prepare documents or which targets, especially in uh, our non-speaking English region. Well, if you have a business card, please leave it on the chair as well, because we think it's very welcome to, to discuss from your, from your country and region and have your expertise. So that's an offer that is very welcome. Sir, can I invite you? Please introduce yourself also. Yes, hi. My name is Amado Espinosa. I'm come from Mexico. Um, and I am the representative of the private sector in Latin America at the MAC, at the IGF. And 
I interested in learning about standards and what you are actually doing at this coalition and yeah, how can we take advantage of your expertise? Thanks. Yes, and uh, how can we get the, the messages we have better across to the MAG and from there translate them into perhaps other... Uh, so that's very, very welcome that you're here. So th thank you for attending. And that's this is exactly the meaning of this networking session so that we we have some experts on board, as you as you notice, with very good ideas on how to proceed in the dynamic coalition. But we need more experts to work with them, not just to produce the outcomes, but also to 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 validate intermediate draft reports so that we know that it's addressing the communities in the right way, so that the messages come across in in the language that the specific stakeholder community understands. Well, perhaps it needs to be tweaked a little for another stakeholder community. Um, that is the room. Uh, Mark, I hand over to you for now uh, that to, to invite people who are interested in the Dynamic Coalition to, uh, to express their interest and introduce themselves. So the floor is your, Mark. Okay, Vard, thanks very much. Um, by way of introduction for me, um, I've worked with uh, Vard since the... Um, in, uh, well, before the start of the coalition at last year's IGF, before we launched it, uh, we uh, he and I worked together uh, in the previous year following the pilot project, looking at the whole issue of standards and gaps in um, deployment. Uh, my background is UK government. I was a policymaker on internet policy um, for the UK and international organizations, including the IGF going all the way back to 2008. At ICANN, I was in the UK seat and uh, the Council of Europe on the human rights side. Uh, I represented the UK and uh, I worked, uh, led, led UK negotiations in the G7 on digital for a couple of years. Uh, and now I'm a kind of free agent, relatively speaking, uh, and working uh, with, uh, with the coalition and with Eurodig and so on uh, and other activities um related to this whole area of internet governance but this is a key mission for me to uh to um advance this uh coalition focused on uh, uh standards and, and deployment and uh creating greater security and safety online so that's me uh i will just quickly uh run through um the list of uh, online uh, subscribers uh, so i'll start with um Awo Tanasu, do, would you like to say a few words, Awo, to about why you're here and and what you're hoping to get out of the session? Thank you. Right. Um, so, hello everyone from from Ghana. Uh, my name is Awo Haida Mamenya, like Max said. Um, yes, we are. Jo I'm joining the networking session today to support the call, uh, which is of the coalition. Uh, but on a personal level, to um, see where we could team up in promoting uh, a proactive change in the interest of uh, child protection, so prevention and protection in the space holistically. So that aspect of uh, internet governance is key for me. And uh, most often than not, yes, we, we, we follow through with uh, Jenny's and uh, what she's been doing. And sometimes we adapt some of her contents for our audience use as well. So uh, essentially, I lead a team at Child Online Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Awa. It's great to have you uh, linked into us. And I'm sure there are um, uh, several areas of specific uh, focus of the coalition where your, ex your own background and expertise and activities are going to be highly relevant. In child protection, we haven't really looked at uh, uh, specifically, but I always have it at the back of my mind. Um, now, let me turn to Lavent uh, Jobse. I hope I've... Um, Pronounce that correctly, Levent. Hello, my name is David Dobstai. I'm from Switzerland. I work at Electrofis. Uh, this is a Swiss professional association for electrical engineering, uh, power, and information technologies. And we are the standard, uh, national standardization body 
for electrical engineering and electric security. And uh, we are committed to electrical safety and security for over 130 years. And the same uh, we, we want to achieve uh, for digital security. And we aim for a binding cybersecurity implementation standard like we have for low voltage installations, maybe. Thank you very much, Lavette. This is multi-stakeholder engagement in practice to have you here from the, from the technical uh, engineering uh, community. Fantastic. Let me now turn to uh, Wintama Hanna, just to say a few words uh, about your interest in this uh, coalition, why you're here, what you're hoping to get out of our, our discussion today. Just a few words, Wintama. Sorry, you've just arrived, so I put you on the spot, maybe, but uh, hope you don't mind. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, fine. Do you want to say a few words about uh, your interest here? Okay, I just want to say something, just something brief and then um, I'm currently in school, uh, but then I'm much interested in security um hello okay great yeah. okay women in in internet security because uh -huh. one thing i've noticed is that when it comes to the issue of internet you hardly get enough women who get involved and then it, it has been one challenging thing to rest to some of us who are now venturing into the internet scope, who um, considering issues around the internet, how are women tackling these issues concerning um, security and other stuff, how in their working scope, how are we embracing that and how are we, what, what measures are we put, are put in place to help women in this environment. Uh, my, myself in particular, I'm new to the internet, but I, as time goes on, I am, it's getting more interesting. And I just wish to be able to understand things along the line whilst I try to, whilst I, I, I learn, so that I'll be able to help my generation even as we work along. So basically that's what I have and my, expectation is that at the end of the day the lessons i'm securing here will help me to do a lot for women in particular thank you very much hannah that's a very important aspect of all our work uh okay. but gender balance in terms of how we do the work but also focusing on gender issues i'm sure we will um uh, get okay. during our work in the future. Thank you. Yeah, and and one one thing I I would just want to talk about is just to appreciate my I think my boss who is the convener for the founder for um uh, what do you call it is it IGF Ghana School of Internet Governance Mr Raymond uh, it was through his organization I started having interest in the internet scope because I, I, I had the opportunity to get enrolled last year. And it was awesome because we learned a lot. So many materials were shared to us through the, um, both the online and then we also had the opportunity to meet face to face. And a whole lot was shared to us. And that's how come I, I started embracing the internet society because initially we thought we, I didn't really see anything wrong with what, I'm, what I do when it comes to internet, but that is where I started appreciating what privacy is, how the, the, the boundaries each and every one of us have when it comes to the internet, security, what is security all about? Do we just get up and start posting everything? Right now, I'm a bit um, careful when I start sharing information about myself, but initially, I, I could just get up and do anything. And even when someone requests for 
information about me. I used to just give it out, but currently due to that program I had, uh, it's really helped most of us and it has been helpful to me. And <laughs> I just want to use this platform to thank him and appreciate the program okay. as well. Great, great feedback for you there, uh, Raymond. Um, okay, we've only got, uh, what, another 30 minutes or so. So let's quickly um, invite um, the other uh, online participants to, to say who they are and, and one or two sentences on, on your interest. Uh, I, I see uh, Robin, Robin uh, Gellhardt. Would you like to say a few words, uh, Robin? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Robin Gellhardt. Uh, I work for the, uh, the Netherlands Standardization Forum, uh, which is an advisory committee for the Dutch government on uh, uh, interoperability and information exchange. And uh, yeah, what we do is we, uh, among, amongst others, is that we select uh, key internet standards, uh, security standards, and try uh, well, we, we advise government whether they should mandate such uh, security standards for government agencies. And uh, in case we do, we help government agencies to uh, implement these standards and to drive adoption of these standards. Um, yeah, we have some good practices that we can share. So if people are interested, I'll put uh, the link to our website in the in the chat, which also contains my, uh, uh, my contact details. And uh, yeah, I'm also curious on, on other good practices to drive adoption of standards uh, for uh, government agencies, for example. Okay, Robin, that's, again, this is exactly a great fit for this coalition, the linkage into government and procurement and so on. It's fantastic. Thanks very much for joining. Uh, now I go to Bats Batsirai Madondo. I hope I got the pronunciation roughly right. Batsirai, would you like just to say who you are and your interest? Maybe Batsirai can't unmute or is temporarily away. Shall I go now to Kwaku and... Oh, Batsirai, yes, please go ahead. Oh, good afternoon, Mark. Uh, I'm just a volunteer, but uh, however, my interests are in internet governance and uh, happy to be here. I can't hear you. You're muted. Sorry. Where Where are you? Oh, I'm in Zimbabwe right now. I'm in Africa. Zimbabwe. Great. Our first Our first contact with a stakeholder in Zimbabwe. So that's fantastic. Thanks for joining. Thank you very much. And uh, let me go now to Kweku Antwi. Hi. Thanks, Mark. Uh, my name is Kweku Antwi from Ghana. Um, I wear several hats, but today. Um, I'm on a committee for a government regulatory agency which deals with skills um, and deployment of skills, what we call the technical and vocational sector, ICT skills committee. So um, I'm here wearing that hat, also looking at how we can impact skills um, in, in giving people the requisite security skills, the requisite um, um, cyber skills that we be able to also have more of a trainers of a trainers where we can replicate this in our society. And I'm great to be here with the coalition and thank you for the opportunity. Thank, thank you, Kwaku. That connects directly with uh, Janice's uh, work in the working group uh, too. Thanks very much. Let me now go to Bart Knubben. If you could say, introduce yourself and say your interest briefly. Bart. I don't know, I'm still waiting. Maybe Bart is still muted or not. Well, let me let me go. Maybe we can come back to Bart. Let me go to, I never thought I'd ever say this, but uh, let, let's go to Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew, would you like to uh, say a few words? Okay, yeah. Hello, everyone. I think I, I joined late. My name is Prince Andrew Livingston Zuta from Ghana, uh, a member of uh, e-governance and internet governance foundation for Africa. Um, my interest mostly is in uh, universal acceptance, and I have been working uh, in some few working groups, making sure that uh, uh, the internet is universal and everybody gets access to it. And I'm, I'm happy to be part of this call. Great. Thanks very much for joining. Bart, do you want to have a go? If you can unmute. 
Uh, I see a message in the chat. Microphone does not seem to be working. Okay. Uh, well, Mark, Mark this, this is Wout. Uh, yep. Bart is a, is a colleague of Robin, so we, we basically heard the, the message, but then that way I can introduce Bart for him, that he works for the forum standardization and is a very much a driver of the uh, apply or explain internet standards list that the, the Dutch government is uh, ad actively advocating for the whole of the Dutch government at all levels. So the, the idea is that you have to apply these, these standards and if you cannot, you have to explain why you're unable to do so. And that puts some pressure on organizations to actually implement and deploy all these standards and best practices. I hope I said that right, Robin. I see you on the screen, so you can nod. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Maybe I can add that Bart is also a project manager behind internet.nl, which is a, a testing tool for modern uh, internet standards. Uh, so yeah, I'll put the link in the chat as well, which is an open source project, by the way, so you can reuse it. Yes, and I can say that I've been advocating it throughout the uh, IGF uh, in the stand uh, for you guys. And uh, I just noticed that the UN comes up to 11% and they were quite shocked <laughs> when they saw it. So um, they, they, they also learned a lesson. Mark, back to you. Thank you. Okay, Vaad, thanks very much. Okay, great. Thanks very much, uh, everybody in the room and online introducing yourselves. And um, you've heard... Uh, about what the uh, the coalition aims to do from the introduction that Vout gave and also some of the specifics of the current work and projected work of uh, of working groups. Uh, maybe Mallory will join us to, to explain about uh, procurement, if she's still tied up, uh, as the chair of the working group three on uh, procurement and supply chain management. And uh, I, the... The theme for this kind of, to structure our discussion a bit is about how to empower stakeholders to drive the deployment of uh, standards, security related standards and related uh, best practice. And when I talk about stakeholders, I, you know, it's a lot of the people here are representing those stakeholders, educationalists, um, uh, technical, obviously technical community, government policy makers, private sector, um, uh, decision takers in the in the in the corporate uh, area, uh, uh, you know, academics as well, you know, uh, ec you know experts all through the line, really, um, who who are engaged on security and delivering security for consumers. And the manufacturing sector, of course, is important because they can design standards into products so that people actually are aware of them and that there may be. Uh, issues about raising awareness of what, uh, how good a device is in terms of providing security and safety and confidence and trust uh, in being online, especially for individuals, for, for small businesses who are going into the whole digital economy for the first time and so on. So empowering stakeholders, what are your thoughts on this? How can the coalition help with that uh, a challenge really to to um, to the whole technical community to the industry to bridge this gap between the incredibly valuable work in developing standards and the gap which is that you know a lot of these standards are not actually uh, embedded in the networks and devices that we're all using to the cost of our uh, insecurity insecurity in practice as as about has talked in uh, in those terms. How do we make security practice universal? So, who wants to come in with some first thoughts about that? About how the stakeholder community can work together to achieve greater online security and safety through specifically existing standards being deployed more effectively. Who wants who wants to react to that? I can't, I can't see any hands. Janice moment. has her hand Janice? up here, and I saw that Yuri had his hand up a while back. Okay. Yes, I think this is a very interesting question, because as an expert in this field, I've actually been online many different places trying to find a list of these standards. How can the public be aware if us experts can't even find a list of, of the relevant standards? So I'd say that's the first thing. Bring them together, make them visible, 
and then let us weigh, raise awareness about them. The, the consumer, the user must be aware of them before they can really be discerning when they choose the products that they're using. Thank you, Janice. Uh, how can that information be presented to consumers though? I mean, you know, often you know, where you buy a, um, an electronic device, do we ever look at the technical specifications? No, we don't because we just don't understand it. Yeah, it's too complicated. Is there a communication issue there too, Janice? Well, first of all, there's an availability issue. I want to know where these are. And the only place I actually found them was a paying website. Uh, and how many consumers are going to go there? So that's the first thing. Bring the standards together and make it free of charge to enter them and to see them. But the second thing, now when we buy a refrigerator or any other device, we can see a grading. Why don't we have this sort of grading? Uh, on security, it would be really helpful and it makes the public aware that there are standards they should comply to. This morning I watched the test, uh, internet.nl, so on the UN website, and I saw that the answer very clearly showed the areas where uh, security was lacking. But why isn't this sort of thing generally available to the public? So I, I think there are a number of ways. One, make it visible to the people who are most concerned about it so that they can start doing the awareness raising. Uh, two, if we have this information, we can get it into schools because this is really where it should be and into vocational training establishments. And three, develop some sort of security rating systems on websites, on software, on apps. Uh, Robin, the question, question for me to you, because this goes beyond your scope, of course, because you're working solely for, for government organizations, but are you aware of initiatives like this that actually could educate the, the consumers and end users in a better way? Um, no, not really. I, I think Internet of Now is also for that purpose. It's meant as a, yeah, a, a lower entry into assessing the security of websites and, and email security. So basically everyone can test, can use it and use it use the reports to uh, question uh, suppliers, for example, or organizations that they do business with. Um, yeah, and I think, uh, like, if, um, yeah, uh, knowledge about standards is lacking in, uh, in education. And actually, I got interested into standards through education, but that was more uh, uh, like a voluntary option than that it was part of my curriculum. Um, so, yeah, it would be good if there was more, more uh, emphasis on getting standards and uh, security standards into education not sure how yet i just um that re this reminds me of uh, a briefing that vout and i had um uh, earlier this year from the singapore Cybersecurity agency who've got a labeling system in, in Brazil, and i think they have been talking about it uh, here at the igf uh, in katavici so that's one interesting uh, initiative and and uh, maybe kind of norm might might develop on labeling of equipment and devices. The other point I think is well taken about education. Now, Yuri, you, you wanted to uh, come in, didn't you, earlier? Do you still want to speak, uh, Yuri? Yes. Go on. OK, go ahead. And, yes, then, and... uh, I think that, of course, uh, we in the frame uh, work in the working frame of our um, dynamic coalition, we're not able to write a new standards or uh, maybe some uh, best practice uh, instruction and about uh, best practice. But uh, I think that uh, we can understand the situation, the current situation and the problems that are in now with the very sensitive challenges of security and safety. Where is security and safety are uh, begin? I think that uh, uh, this one begin in our mind. 
and sure it's uh connect with education it's connect with uh professional skills sure but with i think with a uh, general structure of uh, security uh, from end to end i mean structure from building security in digital entity it's maybe websites and maybe devices different devices iot devices not iot devices uh, gadgets uh, it's maybe um, um, emails and other internet services it's a big and complex uh no, so cloud of security which can cover of our activities all kinds of our activities and the complexity of uh, situation is a situation with multi stakeholders and poly actors nature do you understand me yes multi stakeholders and poly actors and this uh, base um, base stakeholders and actors have diversity uh different own aims tasks and means for support of security and in this uh what we can propose to such complex community and what is maybe result of our work of uh what may be uh, our outreach is it a new vision on the security and safety issues issues in general maybe it's maybe it's what uh, is visibly a new approach approaches for solving the complex of these uh, of these uh, issues maybe it will be a new points of view on the basic and reference models for iot because the reference the current uh, reference models have lacks for security maybe uh, okay. it, it's it's real it's real i think it's, uh, it's thank you yuri i think it's a very uh, very strong message it's a vision really of a holistic approach that we uh, do connect with with well, the, the whole roster i say of yes. stakeholder stakeholder actors that i mentioned at the beginning in terms of empowerment and in, including as as we've just talked uh, about uh, education across the board from school level right through to vocational technical educational and, and, and so on and i i see uh, our you commented in the chat about uh, digital citizenship ship skills i think that, i don't i'm not sure if you're referring to a specific initiative but it sounds a very neat way to capture this digital citizenship that has security right up there as as a key key component of of being a digital citizen uh okay so let me uh go see if anybody i see i see we have a new joiner uh christian Nzier. uh we, everybody who is on this um networking uh, christian had a the opportunity to say a few words about their interests so i invite you now christian if you can take the mic uh and unmute uh to say a few words about your specific interest about how empowering stakeholders from industry education uh, from uh, uh, users from procurers from the manufacturers can be empowered to great create greater security through standards um my screen is going all over the place but uh, christian would you like to say a few words uh, uh, yes uh, thank you uh, hello can great. you hear me yeah yes we can hear you great yes i'm christian z i'm actually calling from ghana africa and i'm happy to be here uh, the, the reflection you you mentioned i would like to say that um, 
from my experience and also within the region where we uh, where I am, I do believe uh, we need an open minded from uh, the community across all the stakeholders uh, as a whole, uh, because uh, I do believe without that openness, uh, building a meaningful uh, a digital society will be a bit difficult. So because uh, we share about a lot of uh, platform processes and event uh, environment, but if we don't have that openness, the openness that is one, the number two is also the collaboration, uh, the collaboration as well that I can also foresee uh, it is having a, a, a problem because if we don't have openness and collaboration, all that we are trying to put together will have no uh, avail. And that is basically um, what I can say for now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian. And uh, you know, collaboration is is it's what we're all about, really, trying to foster that uh, collaboration. It, can I ask, in your experience, Christian, what are, what are, what are the, the main barriers to that? Um, is it, you know, people working in silos uh, or, or lack of opportunity to, to engage on a platform with other, other stakeholders, with the government, with regulators or... Uh, service providers, network operators, what, what, what is the barrier to achieving collaboration in your view, Christian? Okay, thank you. Thank you for actually uh, uh, bringing that question. Uh, in my view and from, the, from what I observe from the community as well, I may say uh, it is um, self-interest, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have, let's say, uh, we have, let me take uh, a case, that, just a simple example where we have a technical community, the silo mode, right? Let's say technical community on your site, maybe uh, in the past, they have tried to bring some, some idea on the table, discuss with maybe the government and the civil society, then it did not go through like they were expected. So therefore they withdrew them, them, uh, themselves. Now they are working on the silo mode. They are trying to do, to set their standards on their own working, building their own uh, business, making, I mean, making it work for them. And on the other side, the government also, they are also working on their own, you know, trying to polish what they are doing and also trying to make sure that the business people they must follow what they are doing so these are a basically different scenario everybody is working on his own and hoping that oh having in mind that oh a couple of years ago i have tried to uh, call the other people and they didn't uh, buy into the idea then let me go my way and when you call on any of the party to come on board, they will tell you that, oh, the other side there, yeah, it is just a waste of time. I can't come in and discuss because I know that if I come, no, it, uh, nothing will be, uh, will be achieved at the end because we have self interest people are coming only for uh, business value, uh, no community interest, not for the good of people. We can see that at the end of the day, nobody want to mingle with and, uh, the, the other person because of that self-interest. And okay. uh, the collaborative also is very far away. That's, those are very interesting and very powerful points. And uh, you know, when, when we as a coalition do our outreach, um, we want to connect with potential platforms, with potential fora, like, like national and regional internet governance fora, advocate that kind of approach. I mean, this is, I mean, the IGF concept is all about uh, equal um, uh, basis for, for exchanging uh, views and working out solutions and, uh, and in a transparent way. So no hidden, you know, corporate interests or, or specific interests uh, and that, that there is effective 
uh, process for for engagement. That's that's one of the key. Uh, that's a key message, I think, that we will we will continue to to deliver as this coalition and articulate in our in our outputs. Um, okay, so let's. Uh, we've only got what like about five yeah. minutes more to go for discussion. This, Mark, the, the, this is Mark. Yeah. Okay, that's why on. I'm coming in for a moment. We have okay. eight minutes. Um, I have one question to the to, to the, the, the the both rooms. We've heard this challenge in Ghana. Is there an example among you that have actually dealt with this problem in in a positive way, so that there actually is communication, which can actually lead to some sort of outcome? So does somebody have a, an an example of how they approach this, and could that be a, pra a practice of a good practice for other countries to follow? So who would like to answer? Well, that could mean that there are no initiatives, but. That's what I'm thinking. And that, you know, <laughs> we could be articulating a model in our, in, in the course of de delivering our, uh, or developing our outcomes. Raymond? Yes, Raymond. Um, what was your question? I think that is clearly what initiative specifically were you talking about? So what my question was, the, the my question was whether there are examples among the people present here, if in, in their country there is uh, some sort of collaboration that is more successful than that Christian has just mentioned about the daily practice in Ghana. Okay. Um, in that case, let me leave it for Christian to, to answer. Well, he's saying that there, there isn't effective, you know, there's too much uh, self-interest and not, not um, open, transparent and uh, uh, collaborative uh, spirit. So, as I understood from Christian, it's 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 something that's not happening. But are there models, as Vout is asking, that we could look at, uh, you know, which we could uh, advocate as best? Well, I can mention one, uh, Mark. In the in the Netherlands, there is an organization called ECP, and it it stands for the acronym stands for something which is totally irrelevant compared to where it started to about twenty five years ago. Um, they have a position, they're a foundation or an association, one of the two with members, and they position themselves exactly between government and industry and academia and civil society. And what actually happens in the Netherlands is that the government starts some sort of initiative on a specific topic. And after three years, they've well, basically said everything they could, but it's not perfect. And quite often they give ECP the, the assignment to bring everybody together. And it's literally working maybe 30 people, but they have this big room with a big table. And what they do is they provide the secretariat for that group. They search for a chair and together they invite the people to join and discuss the specific topic. And that means that all these different people with different interests come together. And quite often after two, three or four years of deliberation, usually it takes that long, but then there is some sort of a bookwork saying, this is the way we're going to operate together. They've talked to each other, spoken to each other, learned to trust each other. And even on very competitive issues on security, where they think they're competitors, find they have things in common and start solving it together. There are also organizations that are called ISEC, and I'm, I've lost the acronym, it's on security and within specific sectors. So there the banking sector comes together, the water sector, the energy sector, the transport sector, all vital to countries and they work together on security issues. So that are ways that people who are adverse to each other and even in hard competition with each other can come to specific solutions by working together and learning to trust each other and learning to digest sensitive information without 
using it in a competitive way. So there are examples around the world that could work, but that means that within a country, there needs to be the trust to set up an association or a foundation, whatever it is, of that form that is trusted to do actually the work. Okay, um, I've got to raise a red card. Yeah. Against my coordinator. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just that we are running out of time. I see um, uh, Raymond and Yuri want to say a few words. Um, please keep keep it really brief. And Wout has to finish off with some in very important messages. So I'm going to ask one, one thing, minute each. Mark, I'm asking one thing. Can somebody put the link to the Dynamic Coalition in the chat? If it hasn't happened, I can't, can't see the chat. So that the people who've made very interesting contributions can sign up to us. Because we heard a few people speaking that we would really like to become a member of this Dynamic Coalition. And I'll hand over back to you, Mark. Sorry. Okay, okay. We're trying to do a lot in the last few minutes, um, very importantly. But okay, Raymond uh, and then Yuri, one minute each, maximum. Okay. Uh, in my case, I just want to backtrack what Christian said that uh, when people try to make initiatives and they reach out to other entities, people are reluctant to cooperate, um, probably because of their own personal interest. Um, I have some same experience when I started the initiative on EGICFA. We reached out to um, some entities who totally kicked against the idea, but we are moving on. But on the other hand, we have people who, individuals who are interested and we are moving on very well. Thank you. Okay, Raymond, thanks very much for that final point. Yuri, one minute. Uh, I want to finish my speech that our coalition should be the platform uh, for searching uh, of them of uh, the form collaboration in various type of relevant activities. Relevant, I mean, uh, for searching security and safety means. And uh, this is uh, maybe one of the result of our work. Uh, because we didn't find, uh, find and we don't have such a form for such collaboration. It's very important. It's very important. And gap in the organizational form in general. Okay, Yuri, well said. Support you all the way. Okay, uh, Vout, back to you. We have got a link in. Thanks to Bart helping me out. I can, I'm not very good at multitasking, <laughs> but uh, we've got the link in. So uh, please note, everybody, uh, back to you, Vout, for concluding yeah. remarks. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Th thank you very much, Mark, for moderating and Bart for putting the link in because it's something I just can't see here on the screen. Um, I want to thank you all for the very good ideas that you've expressed and the interest that you've shown in this dynamic coalition. So I'm asking you to join it and help us build the way forward as you. Uh, along the questions that you have been raising because they're a part of this program. We will be writing the research proposals and uh, sending them out into the world to find funding to do the actual research. We're looking for experts willing to work with us, but also for people who are able to open doors for us. So we've been having many conversations here from the UN's tech envoys office with the Polish government, the Swiss government, the Dutch government, all sorts of organizations that are here at the IGF. So I'm very, very glad I came so that I was able to have all these meetings. And I can tell you two things. We are taken extremely seriously. There are people coming to me, oh, you don't have to explain what you guys are doing because I know the important work that you're carrying out. We've got compliments of what we have, what we have achieved in this past year, how far we have come, and they had never expected it. So in other words, we are progressing in a very good way, but the second year will have to be the year where we really are able to produce some of our indicated outcomes. So with, with that, um, again, please join this coalition and make sure that it's going to work. And with that, uh, I'm thanking the people here behind the desk for making this all possible, the captioners in the, the background, you participating and of course, my dear vice chairs and chairs sitting in the, here in the room or at home, 
I wish you all very well in these challenging times and stay healthy and safe. And I hope to meet in the virtual meetings pretty soon so that we pick up the work towards the IGF in 2022. So with that, I wish you all very well and thank you for your presence and have a very good day and weekend ahead. Bye-bye.